Welcome to Rebel Speak and Be Encouraged and today is St. Patrick's Day, the 17th of March and in my reading that's always Psalm 77 and it's a psalm of Asaph and I really love um, Asaph's voice, if you will, that there's a way that he is so raw in his emotional storytelling and so I thought today I'll read Psalm 77 just to, anyway, just about when life when we're looking, when we're looking for God and, and not feeling like we're seeing God and, and where we go, what we do in a moment like that. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and my soul refused to be comforted. So there's this deep distress. And where does the author go? He where does the author go? He goes to God. He goes to God. I remembered you, O oh God, and I groaned. I just love this rawness. I mused and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. And so even in the depth of his despair, he sees God at work, allowing him to pray, allowing him to beseech God. It, God strengthen, strengthens him in such a way that he's able to feel the weight of his sorrow. Like It's like God's allowing him to even move forward in the midst of his, his great despair. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I, I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? It's a troubled time. Is it going to be like, is this the new normal? Is this the new normal? Hmm. Was his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? There's a, a disadvantaged position that the author finds himself in. He's in a deeply disadvantaged position. And, and the things that he once knew are not enough for today. They're not enough. He needs something new. He needs something new. Wow. Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he, has he in anger withheld his compassion? <laughs> it's almost like it's double speak. Do you know? It's almost like it's double speak. Like, God, are are you this new version of you? But it's, it's also he's saying things that are so not how God works. It's as if he's reminding himself of who and what God is like. Almost as if he's teasing himself, right? In this struggle, there's this frustration and exhaustion. But he, he says it in such a way that it gets to a point where it, it's almost like, I don't want to say ironic, so that's not the right word for it. But he's he's almost shutting his own mouth. <laughs> so I'm going to do that whole thing. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? There's this experience I'm having, but he knows full well that's not what God is like. So he's having this dissonance, this real dissonance between his head knowledge of God, his heart knowledge of God, his mind, I guess that is head, his knowledge of God, his experience. And I, he's in this moment that it's not adding up. And what do you do in a moment that's deep in disappointment? What do you do? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High. I'm going to appeal to my experience of God. I'm going to appeal to the years of God's break in and through, not only in his own life, but historically. I'm going to stand by the you, God, you've been. I'm going to stand by the you that you are. I'm going to stand by that you, that version of you, God. I'm not quickly 
declaring you this God whose promise failed for, has promise whose promise has failed for all time. I'm not going on that route. Mm -mm. It's very powerful. Then I thought to this I will appeal the years of the right hand of the Most High. I just love that the years of the right hand of the Most High. I'm standing right, standing. I'm standing on the years of the right hand that hand of authority, that hand of administration, that hand of power of the Most High, I will remember the deeds of Yahweh. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I stand, I stand by your miracles of long ago. I stand by the miracles of long ago. I'm not afraid. I, I feel like saying this, I'm not afraid. Like, are we, how fickle, you know? I'm not afraid. I, I don't think the miracles of God have a um, short shelf life. They stand, they speak. They speak into those moments that are very difficult. What I've known of God and what I've seen speak into the bumpy terrain. They speak in the uncomfortable moments. They hold my hand. They are my legacy. The faithfulness of God and how I've known and how we as a people have known the faithfulness of God. I stand in that right cloud, that cloud of witness. I stand in the remembrance, remember, remembering, memory, the remembering. I don't know. I'm standing with that. I'm standing in the council of your memory, God. I'm standing there. Woo! I will remember the deeds of Yahweh. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. I'm holding on to that. I'm holding on to you, God. Ooh, I'm holding on to you in all the ways that I have known you. All the ways, God, that you have fashioned yourself, fashioned my life in light of yourself. Worked in my life, worked on my behalf worked on my family's behalf, worked in my history. All the ways, God, that you've spoken and my life is what it is because of what you have spoken. Your ways, O oh God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. You are the God that is revealed and seen through his own interaction with humanity. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people. We are a people that are known through your redemption. Mm. You redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The call of um, Israel, Jacob, and then of course, Joseph, and the moving, the moving, into Egypt and the moving out of Egypt. What it, the way that they became a people, the way of God, the, the way that God moved amongst them and created them a people, a people of God's own. The waters saw you. This is really fun. The waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. That is beautiful writing. I'm just gonna read that again. It's such beautiful writing. Asaph is doing here, imagining what it might have been like, the display of power as the sea rolled back and dry ground appeared and that play of uh, no, no footprint there. <clears throat> the waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. 
Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. <sighs> the earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, through your foot, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. What a contrast. The greatness of God. The greatness of God and just kind of this vibrant painting of that, that of, re, of re remembering that moment. And the gentleness, the gentleness. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And here Asaph is re-remembering. He's re-remembering -re his lineage. He's re-remembering how his lineage is marked by God. That whatever is transpiring, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and my soul refused to be comfort. Just this hungry, hungry pursuit. Hungry. I, I cannot rest until I hear from you, God. I can't, I can't go forward. I remembered you, O oh God, and I groaned. I mused and my spirit grew faint. That, that's a lot of musing. That's a lot of pursuit. His spirit grows faint in its pursuit of God. There's nowhere else. There's nothing else I want. Nothing else. I'm, I'm needing a God only satisfaction, right? I, I'm not. I need God what you give. Nothing else. Nothing else can satisfy me. You, I just love that. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. Like in the midst of his despair and in the midst of his absolute passion and pursuit of God. God helps him be passionate in his pursuit of God. Just like that, that help from the inside, that help from the inside. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused and my spirit inquired. There's lots of relationship there. There's lots of relationship for Asaph with God. There's lots of thinking and thinking through and and sitting in that relationship and sitting in the history of that relationship and the history as a people of God, the history of inheritance, but also his own, his own many nights of knowing God, his resting, even as he has no rest. <laughs> no, God, no, God, no, you alone. I, nothing else will satisfy. There's no other quadrant of reality that I'm interested in. I want to hear from you and you alone. You and you alone, God. And I know your nature. You speak. And I know I can take all my passion, all my concern, all my fears, all my anxiety, and I can move towards you, God. And you're the right person to move towards. You're the one to go to. You're the one to pour my heart out to. And as I pour my heart out to you, I remember the constancy of your fire, the constancy of your nearness, the goodness that you are like no other. There is no other God like you. I like thinking about God in light of even um, St. Patrick and how creative and unique St. Patrick was and in helping the people of Ireland meet God, helping them meet the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And, and long after St. Patrick, Ireland had a really vibrant faith that, um, if, if I remember correctly, and I, I believe I do, that much less hierarchical than a lot of uh, Christian faith. There was quite a breadth of freedom of pursuing and ministering and, and moving out and about the world. A real vibrant, vibrant, vibrant culture. A vibrant people that walked from and worked out of their experience of encounter with Jesus Christ. And I just want to, I don't know, I want to wish you a very happy St. Patrick's Day. I want to speak the loyalty. That's the word. God is so very loyal. God is so very loyal. God is so very faithful. And God sees your loyalty so tender. 
God remembers you. As we remember God, God remembers us. God sees us oh, just in light of our yeses. We have been taught kind of, um, I won't say this long, and I know I've said it often, but out of, um, and, and, and these have been helpful things, right? Un, um, out of Plato or Socrates, depending on how, um, how you understand forms, and, and I'm just going to go with Plato. <laughs> but there's this idea of, of a highest form, right? There's triangles, and, and there's a highest, there's a perfect triangle. And, and we can have an idea of perfect that way. And I used to teach, and I'd say to students, but, you know, if we don't have a sense of perfect, everything would just be accepted and nothing would be changed. And so the idea of perfect is not a bad idea. But, but the thing about it is that we can, like when we say, I'm not perfect, but, right? When you say, I'm not perfect, but, that's, a, that's, that's just a false sense of perfect. Like there's some better version of me. <laughs> and God's looking for that better version of Rebecca. Where is she? And God's like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're you. And, and those days where you say yes to me, those are such beautiful, brilliant days. And God holds on to them. And God doesn't have some kind of ruler and saying like, here's a 10 and here's a nine. And this was an eight day. This was a six day. And, and everything's graded from our concept of a perfect, our concept of a 10 day. And we're discounting the beauty of ourselves and the beauty of life and the beauty of those around us. Mm -hmm. And I think we can contrast that with shallowness, that we're not meant to be shallow, okay? But we're not meant to go from zero to 10 and assess I want to say every waking moment or even sleeping moment. That, that way of thinking, there, there's a lot of gift from Greek intellectualism. And I love the contrast of Plato and Aristotle, how they, they almost do things opposite in some ways, where Aristotle's looking at life, what can I learn from the life I live? And Plato's thinking of, of how... There's something about high aims. There's something about saying, oh, I, I would like to do this better. And then in walks, you know, our life with God, where God's so faithful to the desires of our heart, how we wish and want more, how we're created for more, how we go from glory to glory, how as we say yes to God, God says yes to us, and we see and experience things beyond oh, God's goodness in our life, beyond our imagination, that friendship of God, that way that God's like, how deep do you want to go? How deep, how deep in relationship are you willing to walk with me, the God of the universe? How God made a way for us to walk in such intimacy with him through his son, the gift of salvation, the gift of the Messiah, the hope, the hope that is within us and the hope towards which we just ever grow. It's, it's, it's all honestly so lovely. And I, and I wish you, I wish you the kindness and the friendship, the kin, the kin, the kin of God's grace this St. Patrick's Day. Be encouraged, be blessed.